Hi there and welcome to the third tutorial of the Mechanism Design course where we are looking to actually uh, develop beyond our uh, past tutorial of a pendulum which is fixed in position and we're going to actually give it some extra torque so we'll get it deploying from uh, position A to a position B. Okay. So if we just look at we really refresh ourselves from the past um, the previous tutorial, we have our pendulum model of mass two kilograms, beam length of twenty centimeters. It starts at an angle of fifty degrees, which we have put in the revolute joint. We are then taking the position, and we are then calculating the resistive torque required to prevent it from moving, and then we feed that back into the joint as a torque. Um, so now we want to actually give it a bit more torque and get this mechanism moving. Um, before we do that, I just want to say a couple of quick items that we could um, improve the uh, view of this model. If you go to Diagram and Format and Font Style and Selection, oh, uh, we can actually, oops, sorry, if we go to Diagram, Format, oops, not the selection because I'm selecting on that point mass. If we just go to the whole model, so click away from every item, Format Font Style's full model, so that's for the entire model, we can then select our different uh, font styles for the blocks. So, for example, if you want to increase the font size, if it's too small on your screen, or um, you want to have it displayed nicely on an A3 page, we can update those and actually have a much larger um, view of uh, font size for our blocks. And to continue on, we're going to simplify this model because we're not looking at uh, the workspace. We did that in the previous tutorial. We're just going to focus on using that feedback loop that we generated for uh, displacement. And remember, in your uh, model, when you do come to doing your mechanism, you'll be looking at using the speed of your um, mechanism. That'll be going through a gearbox ratio, a gear ratio. So you'll need a function block to calculate this. That will then go to your motor profile, and then you'll work from the motor profile that you'll be you've selected from Bosch. And here's one, here's an example of one. Uh, so you'll be using the speed as the input, and then you'll be working out the new torque at that given speed. So, for example, if you, when your mechanism starts, you'll be at zero speed. So your your calculation, your function, should calculate for the max uh, torque. Okay. So here's 30 newton centimeters. This will then go back through the gear ratio and back and give you the torque that's going to power your mechanism. Okay, and that's your challenge: is generating the function blocks that represent that system. So, if we put that to one side for a second, um, and what we're going to do for uh, for this example is actually just give this an extra newton meter of torque. So, if we just go back to our function plus one and apply, we're just going to give it an extra newton meter of torque. If we click run, we'll see that actually our model will go over and then continue spinning around clockwise, increasing speed. Okay, That's because we're adding that extra newton meter of torque. But that's all well and good, but actually we want to start and stop at a specific point, and that's what you want to do for your mechanism model. So to achieve this, we can actually go to our mechanism blocks, our template, and use these two blocks, a switch and a stop simulation. And we'll copy and paste those across. The switch works as if it's like a if statement in a MATLAB code. And the if statement is this greater than zero mark within the switch. And if it's greater than zero, it will use this top line. If it's not, it will use this bottom signal here. And we'll connect this up to your stop simulation. And the stop simulation will occur, this will turn on and stop the actual simulation when we give it a signal. So when this actual event occurs. So if we now double click that, we can then set it an angle to stop at. And remember this is in radians at the moment. So what we can do is put at let's say 2.5 radians, click OK, and we have our, our simulation to stop at 2.5. If we then go to uh, run and we run this, we'll see that it will start at 50 degrees and move to our 2.5 radians. And it occurs in a very small time. So even though our simulation is running from 0 to 10 seconds, it stops at half a second. And actually, we can rewind and go through time and see it deploying 
between those two, two positions. So when you're developing your full mechanism, that's the method to stop it from its start position to its end position. Okay. So now what you might want to do as well um, is when you're do creating your functions, we might want to set some limits. So we identify when the motor, or for our case, when our function here is operating outside uh, particular upper and lower limits. So if I bring back across this motor profile, what do I mean by that is if we are going at a negative speed, that happens for the mechanism to be going the wrong way, um, we go down here, we want to always just set the torque to be mm, the max torque. And then the same again if we go beyond the working speed of the motor, we'll set the torque to be zero. So it doesn't continue along this line, we'll have it fixed there. The idea of this is that when you actually come to plotting your mechanism deploy, deployment um, plots, you'll be able to use those limits to identify if the mechanism is, uh, for the, if the motor is not working within its operating window. And where I'll actually be applying uh, diff you know, different gear ratios and damping levels to ensure that it works within that window. Okay, So those are going to be used as our checks to ensure that we are working within this window. So to add those limits, we go back to our mechanism blocks template and we can use the um, saturation block. So uh, copy and paste that in. We flip this block, and we take that in, add that into the system. What it does is just exactly what we say is cut those limits for us. So in this, we're calculating a new torque, and what we're going to here, we're going to set an upper limit of 0.5 torque and a lower limit of zero uh, torque as well. Okay. What we can do to see how the effect of this is actually and not have to go all the way back to MATLAB using the sim out. Um, putting all the values into SIML, we can use the scope, which is a graphing tool in Simulink. So if we copy and paste the scope, and we right click this, we can give it, go to signals and ports, give it two ports. So it's going to take two signals and plot them for us. So it's great for, this is great for just plotting quickly uh, during your simulations to get an idea of what is happening. For your mechanism models in, and your reports, we would expect them to be done using the MATLAB plotting tools. So if we click and run this simulation now, and we'll see what we can get. So actually what we find is that we're not actually giving the uh, simulation enough torque and it's just flopping. So if we go to our scope, we can see, investigate what's actually happening. So if we expand this up, here we go. So this is a, these are the two values plotted. So as you can see, the uh, yellow line here is actually the torque that we're generating for our function block. It's then passing through the saturation block, and the blue line is what we are doing with the saturation. And we can see that we're clipping it between 0 and 0 0.5. So that's exactly what it what we expected to do. We're, we're stopping it from operating outside uh, a given window. Okay, so that is actually how it works. So if we open those limits slightly, let's see if we put that to 0.75, let's see if we can get this mechanism moving in the right direction, but yet still have some limits. Oop, I think that's still uh, not enough. Uh, if we pause that, if we go back to our limits, let's see what we're doing. Okay, so as you can see, it needs quite a bit of torque there. So I think if we set our limits to 5, it won't even go near that clip. And if we set this to minus 5, we can say that it will operate in its normal region. There we go. So now it's back to a usual, back to slamming from point A to point B. So we go into our scope we can see that we're not actually um, letting it, we're using the maximum torque through that system. So if we set it to maybe, let's say go for five, uh, go to, uh, sorry, go to four, let's see what happens.
Okay, yep, so the uh, four is still too high. Let's try three. There we go. And what we can see is that our input here is, well, if we can widen this graph, you can see the input here, it's wanting to give it uh, about 3.5 glutameters there. And actually we're going to give it, uh, clipping it at three, and then it joins the line later on. So that's the essence of using saturation to clip a uh, profile so it stays within the region that you want to work within. And that's the uh, final depot of deploying a pendulum model from point A to point B.